The games may be played in the fall, but many of those are decided during the offseason. To be the Pittsburgh Steeler and to, to wear the black and gold, it, it's a true honor. It's tradition. It's history. Um, it's, it's, there's six trophies in there, and we, we got to go get a seventh. Let's take a little look around the league at every NFL team's best and worst moves so far this offseason. Arizona Cardinals, best, committing to Kyler Murray. Having a quarterback in the NFL is quintessential to a team's success. When you have a guy who's capable of leading a franchise, you have to keep him around. And though things have gotten a little weird with Kyler Murray over the past couple of seasons, the dual threat QB is miles ahead of every other option the Cardinals have rolled out since Kurt Warner. Arizona Cardinals, worst, 20 million guaranteed to Justin Jones. Bringing in Justin Jones to a three-year deal worth $30.1 million with $19.75 million of it guaranteed was a high highly questionable choice. Yes, Jones has a high motor and was a great piece in the Bears locker room, but it's hard to imagine him producing enough to really justify this deal. Atlanta Falcons Best Signing Kirk Cousins The Falcons were one of those teams last year that looked like they were a competent quarterback away from really contending. And uh, well, that my friends is going to be Kirk Cousins to a T. Atlanta Falcons Worst Signing Darnell Mooney Atlanta's offense should look much improved with Kirk Cousins under center instead of Desmond Ritter or Taylor Heineke, but I would love to see them go a different route rather than signing Darnell Mooney. Mooney. His skill set just doesn't complement their offense particularly well, and it feels like a massive overpay. Baltimore Ravens, best, signing Derrick Henry. After countless rumors that the Ravens would trade for King Henry midseason, they finally cut out the middleman and inked him to a modest two year deal worth $16 million, with $9 million of it being fully guaranteed. Pairing Henry with Lamar Jackson is a low risk, high reward deal that could really pay off in spades. Baltimore Ravens, worst, resign Justin Matubike. A four year, $98 million contract exists with $53.5 million at signing and a total of $75.5 million in guarantee is a lot for Justin Matabike. He had a heck of a year in 2023 with career best across the board, but you know, unlike his contract, there is no guarantee that he can replicate that success. Buffalo Bills, best, re-signing AJ Epinesa. AJ Epinesa has now put up two straight seasons with impressive pass rushing performances. His play style as a burly edge with a surprising amount of speed fits well into the Bills system, and he's only turning 25 this year, so heck, a lot lot of upside. Buffalo Bills, worst, letting Jordan Poyer go. Jordan Poyer was quietly one of the cornerstones of the Bills defense over the last couple of seasons, and you really have to wonder what the Bills were thinking by letting him walk. Carolina Panthers, best, signing Robert Hunt. After the beating that rookie quarterback Rice Young took in 2023, signing Robert Hunt was a no-brainer for the Panthers, even if they don't look to be a serious contender this season. Carolina Panthers, worst, trading Brian Burns. Before the 2022 trade deadline, the Panthers reportedly had a massive offer from the Los Angeles Rams for the star pass rush including multiple first-rounders, but unfortunately, because they are the Panthers, they decided to wait and sell off Burns at a massive discount to the Giants. That casket costs a thousand dollars. Okay, 70 bucks. What? Two thousand bucks. That's twice what it costs. Forty bucks. What? He... He doesn't know how to haggle. Chicago Bears, best, signing Jalen Johnson. Rather than lean on the franchise tag, the Bears have signed Jalen Johnson to a four-year deal worth $76 million, with $54.4 million of that deal being guaranteed. That is a hefty price to pay, but hey, a great move for one of the best corners in the league. Chicago Bears, worst, signing DeAndre Swift for $15.3 million. Chicago has made some strong moves this offseason, but uh, signing DeAndre Swift for the price tag that they got him at was a head-scratcher. He went for 1,000 yards in 2023, but still, that is a lot of money for a running back. Cincinnati Bengals, best. Signing Sheldon Rankins. Sheldon Rankins is an interesting fit on this Bengals defense, as he should help in the pass rush by drawing some attention from opposing lines, which in turn should help their primary pass rushers like Trey Hendrickson get after opposing quarterbacks. Cincinnati Bengals, worst. Releasing Joe Mixon. The Bengals made a big decision this offseason parting ways with Joe Mixon, a seven-year starter at running back. It very much remains to be seen if Zach Moss can actually fill the void that he leaves. Cleveland Browns, best, signing Jameis Winston. Signing Jameis Winston to be Deshaun Watson's backup in 2024 was a great decision for the Browns, as they're going to need a viable option for when Watson inevitably gets hurt or is forced out of action due to poor performance. Cleveland Browns, worst, signing Jordan Hicks. Not sure what the Browns were thinking with the Jordan Hicks deal. He is talented, but he's going to be 32 this summer and comes at a high cost. 
Dallas Cowboys best, letting go of Tony Pollard. The Tony Pollard RB1 experiment was a complete failure. Credit to Dallas for recognizing this and going with a low cost option in Rico Dottel instead. Dallas Cowboys worst, no help in the defensive secondary. While the Dallas defense looked explosive in spurts last year, they could have benefited from adding some depth to the defensive secondary this offseason. Denver Broncos best, moving on from Russell Wilson. Sometimes you have to accept that you made a mistake and just move on. This was exactly the case with Russell Wilson in Denver, and hey, credit to the Broncos staff for ripping that band-aid off. Denver Broncos worst, replacing Terry Judy with Marvin Mims and Josh Reynolds. While his tenure in Denver wasn't what the Broncos fans had hoped for, Jerry Judy was undeniably better than Marvin Mims and Josh Reynolds, who the team is now looking to replace him with. Detroit Lions best signing DJ Reader at DT. Lions general manager Brad Holmes has done pretty well to bolster Detroit's defense this offseason, though there may not have been a better move than snaking defensive tackle DJ Reader from the Bengals. The run-stuffing veteran should be a game-changer for a Detroit defense that allowed 23.2 points per game in 2023. Detroit Lions worst, not adding another wide receiver. As explosive as the Lions offense looked last season, they could have used another option at wide receiver to pair with them on Ross St. Brown. Who knows, maybe they'll look to find one in the draft. Green Bay Packers best, signing Xavier McKinney. Considering the role, the safety position is hugely important to new defensive coordinator Jeff Halfley's system. The Packers signing Xavier McKinney was a huge move. Green Bay Packers worst, bringing in Josh Jacobs. While Josh Jacobs, 26, is more than three years younger than his predecessor Aaron Jones, his offensive skill set just doesn't fit in the Packers' offensive system very well. Not to mention that Jones was a huge presence in that Green Bay locker room. Houston Texans best signing Daniil Hunter. The Texans gave Daniil Hunter a near fully guaranteed contract with $48 million of his two-year $49 million contract being guaranteed. And uh, yeah, I think he's going to be worth every last penny. Houston Texans worst, re-signing Danico Autry. Danico Autry looked good last year, but come on, let's face it, he's getting up there and investing a multi-year deal in a 33-year-old defensive end is a risky proposition. Indianapolis Colts best, re-signing Michael Pittman. Pittman was by far the Colts' most accomplished pass catcher, averaging 99 receptions and 1,053 receiving yards over the past three seasons. Indy absolutely had to keep him in town to give Anthony Richardson a friendly target downfield. Indianapolis Colts worst, re-signing Grover Stewart for three years at $39 million. Grover Stewart will be 33 if he plays his three-year extension to its completion, and it is highly unlikely that he's going to be able to justify a contract that pays him roughly $13 million per season. Jacksonville Jaguars best signing Eric Armstead. The interior defensive line was one of the Jaguars' biggest weaknesses in 2023, and adding Eric Armstead should do wonders to address that issue. Jacksonville Jaguars worst, letting Calvin Ridley go to Tennessee. The Jags may not have been able to pay him, but letting Calvin Ridley go, especially to another AFC South team was a big time error. Kansas City Chiefs best acquiring Marquise Brown. The Marquise Brown contract is a fantastic deal for the Chiefs. Seven million for getting the homes a proven, albeit low end, number one type of receiver is an absolute no brainer. Kansas City Chiefs worst trading Legereus Sneed. Sneed originally arrived in Kansas City as a fourth round pick in the 2020 NFL Draft and developed into a huge contributor. Tough to see him leave town if you're a Chiefs fan. Las Vegas Raiders best signing. Christian Wilkins. There is little doubt that Christian Wilkins is going to be a game changer for Las Vegas, as he joins Max Crosby on what should be one of the best defensive lines in football next season. Las Vegas Raiders worst signing Gardner Minshew. Not sure what the Raiders are doing with this Gardner Minshew signing. He's essentially a backcountry version of Jimmy Garoppolo, and well, we saw how that went for the Raiders. Los Angeles Chargers best trading Keenan Allen. As painful as it is, sometimes it is better to get out a year early than a year late. And that looks like the point that the Chargers got to with longtime star Keenan Allen. Los Angeles Chargers worst, releasing Mike Williams. It's obvious that the Chargers are looking to change the story in Los Angeles, but releasing Mike Williams was a strange choice. They've now done away with two of Justin Herbert's favorite targets this offseason. Los Angeles Rams best, signing Jimmy Garoppolo. When Matt Stafford is healthy, the Rams are legit contenders. Bringing in a pro like Jimmy G that is capable of winning games when the vet is tired or banged up is a much needed insurance policy. Los Angeles the Rams worst, re-signing Kevin Dotson to three three years at $48 million. The Rams have never been shy about spending money, but I mean, giving $32 million guaranteed to Kevin Dodson after a relatively small sample size feels like a huge risk. Miami Dolphins best, bringing in Kyle Fuller. 
Two years and $16.5 million for Kyle Fuller is a great value play for the Dolphins. Considering the ninth year pro has played more than 1,000 snaps in three straight seasons and has the versatility to play all over the defensive secondary. Miami Dolphins worst letting Christian Wilkins walk. Christian Wilkins was far and away the most important player on the Dolphins defense last year. It would have been expensive, but Miami really needed to keep him. Minnesota Vikings best sign Jonathan Grenard to pass rush. With the Vikings losing two key pieces and Neil Hunter and DJ Wonom on the edge, getting younger with the talented Jonathan Grenard was a very savvy move. Minnesota Vikings worst, letting Kirk Cousins walk for Sam Darnold. While the idea of Sam Darnold reuniting with former teammate Josh McCown, who is now the quarterback coach for the Minnesota Vikings under Kevin O'Connell, is enticing, I don't think that he's going to be a viable replacement for Kirk Cousins. New England Patriots best, moving on from Mac Jones. After a promising rookie season, things got very ugly for Mac Jones. Very very fast. The Patriots were wise to cut their losses and just move on. New England Patriots worst, parting ways with Bill Belichick. Things may have gotten ugly over the past few seasons in New England, but the messy divorce with Bill Belichick will ultimately prove to be a mistake. Or so that's how it's looking. New Orleans Saints best, extending Tyron Matthew. Tyron Matthew has always been one of those players that transcends that stat sheet. Extending him and Nola was a great move. New Orleans Saints worst, signing Chase Young. The Saints have fielded one of the least productive defensive lines from a pure pass rush standpoint over the past few seasons, and I don't think an injury prone and inconsistent Chase Young is gonna be the solution here. New York Giants best, sign and trade Brian Burns. Considering the price tag that Brian Burns was expected to generate, this sign and trade looks like one of the best moves in the entire league this offseason. New York Giants worst, signing John Runyon Jr. Runyon is a solid player, and yes, the Giants desperately needed to improve their interior offensive line, but come on, he only played 50% of the snaps for most of the year in Green Bay last season. New York Jets best, trading for Hassan Reddick. Getting a player like Hassan Reddick for a conditional third round pick is a a great move. Reddick posted impressive numbers in 2023, recording 11 sacks and 38 tackles, 13 for a loss, snagging a second straight trip to the Pro Bowl. So I see nothing but upside here. New York Jets worst, signing Javon Kinlaw. While Javon Kinlaw is a flashy name, there's reason to doubt that he is the right fit on an aging New York Jets team. Philadelphia Eagles best, signing Bryce Huff. Huff is as good at getting at the quarterback as any edge in the league, and the Eagles' platoon-style pass rushing scheme should fit his playstyle very well. Philadelphia Eagles worst, signing Saquon Barkley. The Saquon Barkley signing has the potential to be like the DeMarco Murray experience 2.0. The upside is there, pairing him with Jalen Hurts, but I'm really Really not sure that this was the right move for the Eagles. Pittsburgh Steelers best, trading for Justin Fields. Securing Justin Fields for only a sixth round pick was a masterclass by the Steelers, even if they have to decide on his fifth year option. Pittsburgh Steelers worst, signing Russell Wilson. Yeah, not sure what the Steelers have been watching though over the past two years that inspired them to roll the dice on Russell Wilson. The veteran QB looks about as washed as it gets. San Francisco 49ers best, adding Leonard Floyd. Adding a player like Leonard Floyd to an already scary Niners defense was a heck of a move. This unit will be special again this year. San Francisco 49ers worst, lost Eric Armstead. While San Francisco should still be on everyone's shortlist for Super Bowl favorites, there's no denying that the loss of Eric Armstead really, really hurts. Seattle Seahawks best, extending Noah Fant. Noah Fant should take on an even bigger role in Seattle's offense with Will Disley and Colby Parkinson departing this offseason. Good move for the Seahawks to extend the tight end. Seattle Seahawks worst, re-signing Leonard Williams. Yeah, don't love this deal by the Seahawks, assigned defensive lineman Williams to a three-year $64.5 million contract. I mean, he looked good in 10 games for Seattle last year, but that's a pretty small sample size, don't you think? Tampa Bay Buccaneers best, re-signing Mike Evans. Mike Evans did what he does in 2023 and just kept catching passes and scoring touchdowns at an elite clip. Tampa Bay Buccaneers worst, franchise tag on Antoine Winfield Jr. Franchise tagging a player like Antoine Winfield Jr. rather than finding a way to get a long-term deal done was a bad move by the Bucs. Tennessee Titans best, stealing Calvin Ridley. What a move by the Titans to snag Calvin Ridley away from the Jaguars. If they can keep him on the field, he should do wonders for that offense and the development of Will Levis. Tennessee Titans worst, signing Kenneth Murray Jr. He has all the athleticism in the world, but considering the production hasn't really been there, it makes this deal rather puzzling. 
Washington Commander's best, signing Frankie Louvre. Bringing in Frankie Louvre on a relatively low-risk deal was a great move. He's a natural pass rusher and should really help to bolster the defense. Washington Commander's worst, signing Marcus Mariota. With a young QB likely in the pipeline via the draft, Marcus Mariota seems like a fairly redundant signing. But hey, what do you think was your favorite NFL team's best move of the offseason? What do you think was the worst? Let us know in the comment section below. If you liked this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps out a ton. And hey, we appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS though, subscribing is a great idea. Because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.